fifth grade, module three, lesson four. Our objective today is to add fractions with sums between one and two. Up until this point, um, we have been adding fractions between zero and one. Now we're going to go all the way over to two. So if, for instance, I was using halves, you would know this was a half, one half, zero halves, one half, two halves, three halves, and then this would be four halves. So if we're adding fractions and they're going to give us a number between one and two, between one and two, we're probably going to have some improper fractions and some mixed numbers. So an improper fraction is when the numerator is larger than the denominator. Okay, so that's the numerator and the denominator. When this one is bigger, that's called an improper fraction. Now if I turn that improper fraction into a mixed number, I know that uh, 2 over 2 equals 1. So I could write that like this. So I could say 2 plus 1. Right, that's what we've got there. So I know that 2 over 2, actually I can cross that out and make that a 1, which would be 1 and 1 half. That's called a mixed fraction. Okay, so I want you to make sure that you know the difference between an improper fraction and an imp and a mixed fraction. Let's go straight to our learn book. For the following problems, draw a picture using the rectangular fraction model. That's what we did yesterday. Okay, and write the answer. When possible, write your answer as a mixed number. We just talked about that, mixed number. So I'm going to draw my rectangles for my rectangular fraction model. There's two. For the first one, this two thirds, I'm going to use vertical lines and I'm going to shade in two out of three, two thirds. This side, one half, I'm going to use a horizontal line and shade one out of two, one half. Now, I need a common denominator in order to add those two together. So, what we're doing right now with this model is we're going to put them over each other. So I'm going to take this one half and I'm going to put it over my two thirds. Now I have one, two, three, four out of one, two, three, four, five, six. And I've just created a, um, an equivalent fraction. Now I'll do the same on this side. Now I have one, two, three out of one, two, three, four, five, six. Now I have two equivalent fractions. I can add them together. Four, six, plus three, six, equals seven sixes. Now this is what? That's an improper fraction, isn't it? And it asked for a mixed number. So how am I going to do a mixed number? Okay, I want you to imagine cutting this out here and putting it over there. Okay, and I want you to imagine cutting this out and putting it there. Okay, so what I'm left with, what I, what would, I, what I would have then here would be one, because it's one whole, it's actually six over six equals one. And here I'm left with, now imagine those got erased, if I erase them, right? I'm left with just this one that's shaded in. So I have one out of five on this side. And that means my mixed fraction would be one and one fifth. 
Seventh, I'm sorry, sixth. Okay, so seven six equals one and one sixth. I could also write that like this. Uh, six sixes plus one six equals seven sixes. You realize that, so I'm going to cross that out and turn it into a one. Now I have one plus one six equals one and one six. There's my there's my mixed fraction, my mixed number. Okay, so let's try it for number two. Let me change my colors. Two rectangular fraction models. The first one is three fourths. So I'm going to use my vertical lines and color in three of them. Make that a little bit better there. One. Yeah. One, two, what is going on there? Let me erase that. I'm going to start with that one over. Some drawing problems, okay. Okay, one, two, three. And on this side, I'm using horizontal lines, and it's two-thirds. So I'm going to color in two out of the three, two thirds. Now I have to find my common denominator. So I'm going to cut this one horizontally into three. So that's basically what I'm doing is I'm multiplying this times three threes. And I'm going to get nine over 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, and on this side, I'm multiplying this side by uh, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 4s, and I'm going to get 8 12s, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 out of 12. Now I have two common denominators, I can add them together, 9 12 plus 8 12s equals 8 plus 8 is 16 plus 1 is 17 twelves okay so I can imagine moving these three over there if I want or four of these over here if I want I know that 12 over 12 equals 1 plus well 17 minus 12 would be 5 twelves would be left over and then I have so I'm going to make this into 1 so 1 plus 5 twelves equals 1 and 5 twelves. Okay, there's our answer. All right, I got a little messy there. Sorry about that. Okay, this time I'll try and draw it a little bit neater, do a little bit better job. Two rectangles to start. One half, oh, that's easy, and three fifths. So I need four lines one, two, three, four, and I need three fifths. So one, two, three of them colored in, three fifths, and one half. And in order to, uh, and in order to find my common denominator, I'm going to cut this one now five times. which means I'll have five tens. And this one I'm going to cut, in, I'm going to multiply by two and get six tens. Now I have five tens plus six tens equals 11 tens. 11 tens is an improper fraction. So I'm going to 10 out of 10 equals one plus one out of 10. And now I know that that equal 10 over 10 equals one, and I'm left over with one tenth. Okay? Please show your work. This seems like a lot, but showing your work is really important in math. Okay. 
Last one on this page. Five sevens. Okay, sevens, that means I need six lines. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, it got messy. And over here, one half. So one, two, three, four, five of those colored in. And here, one of them colored in. Five sevenths and one half. I'm gonna cut, multiply that one by two. Okay, I've got 10 over 14. This one, I'm going to multiply by seven, right? So times seven times seven. Okay, and that's going to give me equal sign seven over 14. Now I have two common denominators, like denominators 10, 14s plus seven, 14s equals 17 14s. Now, 17 14s equals 14 over 14 plus 3, 7, 8, 9, 4, 5, 6, 7, 14s, which equals 1 and 3, 14. Okay. E. We've got just two more like this. There's my rectangle, there's my other rectangle. Three fourths, one, two, three, four. Color in three of them. Okay, three fourths. And this side I've got five, six, so I need five lines. Two, three, four, wait, one, two, three, four, five, five, and five. Five of those get colored in, so one, two, three, four, five. Some of you might be asking, are there other ways to find common denominators? Yes, there's lots of ways. This is how we're doing it today. Okay, if you wanna have that discussion with me about other ways to do it, there are definitely other ways. But um, we're practicing this way for now. I'm sure we will get into other ways at a later date because, of course, we will be doing fractions for a while. Okay, so 18 out of 24. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Good. And this side, I'm going to multiply by 4. Okay, so I went from... 5 6 when I multiplied by 4. So now I have 20, 24s. So that's 4 times 5 is 20 with 4 left over, 24. Okay, now I can add those together. 18, 24s plus 20, 24s equals, that is a 4, sorry, equals 38, 24 which equals 24 over 24. Well, what are we left with? What's 38 minus 24? 14, 24, which equals one and 14, 24s. You guys are smart and you know that we could probably simplify that even more. If we cut 14 and a half and 24 and a half, we could get one and seven, twelfths. I will accept either answer. If you want to simplify because you know how, you can. Otherwise, I will take this answer as well. Okay. Let's see. Last one here is two-thirds and three-sevenths. One two-thirds and three-sevens hmm. 
I'm going to take this one, uh, if this is two-thirds and this is three-sevens, I'm going to take this and multiply it by seven. Which is going to give me 14 21s. And this side I'm going to multiply by three. And that's going to leave me with nine 21s. Now I can add those together. 14 over 21 plus 9 over 21 equals 23 over 21, which also equals 1 and 2 21s. Okay, I skipped that step in the middle where I did 20, uh, 21 over 21 like I did here, but that's because you know what that is. All right. Let's do some problems. We've got three problems. It looks like solve the following problems. Draw a picture and write the number sentence that proves the answer. Simplify your answer if possible. Simplify your answer if possible. Penny used two thirds of a pound of flour to bake a vanilla cake. Mm. She used three quarters of a pound of flour to bake a chocolate cake. How much flour did she use all together? Okay. So that's an addition problem, two-fifths plus three-fourths of a pound. And our answer is going to be in pounds. LBS means pounds. Okay, let's use our model. I like this area model. And three, four, this is two fifths, so one, two, is two fifths, and over here I'm going to use, oop, that was not very clever of me, there we go, uh, and over here I'm using horizontal lines to make three fourths, so one, two, three. Okay. Now we need to find our common denominator. Multiply that by four. Okay. So times four over four equals eight twentieths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight out of twenty. And here, multiplying it by five, which is 15 over 20, is that right? One, two, this should, these should be colored in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, checking my work. Now I have eight, 20ths plus 15 20s. So 15 plus 8 is 23 over 20, which equals 1 and 3 20ths. Okay, there we go. How much flour did she use? 1 and 3 20ths of a pound. Pounds, really. Mm -hmm. Number three. Carlos wants to practice piano two hours each day. He practice, practices piano for three quarters of an hour before school and seven tenths of an hour when he gets home. How many hours has Carlos practiced piano? How much longer does he need to practice before going to bed in order to meet his goal? Okay, so three quarters of an hour plus seven tenths of an hour and we want to subtract that from two to see how much he has to do before he goes to bed right so he wants to do two hours total 
he does three quarters of an hour before school, seven tenths of an hour after school, and now we need to figure out how much uh, he has to do um, before he goes to bed. How much has he done, right? And then we're going to take that answer. Yeah, that'll give us how much he has left to do. Okay, so this this number is going to be how much he how many hours has he practiced. And minus two is how much left? How much longer? So let's do how many he's practiced first. Let's see. Green. Okay, I'm going to do my area model here. I'm adding two fractions. So two, three, four. I've got one two, three of them filled in, three-fourths, and over here, ten, so I need nine lines, one, two, three, four, five, six, ooh, ooh. seven, eight, nine, ooh, I squeezed them in there, ooh, that one's not a very nice one, okay, nine lines. So, seven tenths, that, would, that means I'm going to fill in seven of those. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sorry, that is not pretty. I hope yours is much better. Now we're going to find our common denominator. Oh, so now... I'm going to multiply this by 10, right? So I'm going to split that into 10. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, so that's 10. So I'm going to multiply that by 10. I multiply that by 10, which is going to give me 30 out of 40. And on this side, I'm going to multiply everything by four, okay, four times seven is 28, so I don't have to count them. I know that there's one, two, three, four times seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven equals 28 over 40. Now I can add that together, 30 out of, and 40 plus 28 and 40 equals 58 and 40. Now, that equals 1 and 18 40s. And if I want to simplify that even more, I could say that that was 1 and 9 20ths of an hour. How much Longer does he need to practice before going to bed? Well, two hours minus one and nine twentieths. Okay, let's use a number line for that. How do you? What do you think? Number line for that? Let's do a number line to subtract. There's my zero. And go all the way up to two. And one, and I'm going to break it into 20ths. So I need 19 lumber lines in the between. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Okay, good. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Okay, so now I've got 20 and 20. So this is 0 out of 20. This is 20 out of 20. And here is 40 out of 20. So I'm going to subtract 2 minus 1 and 9 twentieths. So 1 and 9 twentieths. I'm going to go backwards because I'm subtracting. So 1... Sorry, right there. And 9 twentieths. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 
9 twentieths, and that landed right there. So let's figure out what that landed on. Let's count from this side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 out of 20, right there. And the next one over is 11 out of 20. So it looks like subtracting, I got all the way back to 11 twentieths, which equals 11 out of 20, 11 twentieths of an hour. Okay, there we go. How much longer does he need to practice before going to bed in order to meet his goal? 11 twentieths of an hour. If we want to convert that even further, if you want to take it even further, 11 twentieths of an hour, you want to figure out how many minutes that is. 11 twentieths. Let's figure out how many minutes that is. We want that to be out of 60 minutes. What number do we have to multiply to get to 60? Three. And here we would have to multiply it by three. And that would give us 33 out of 60. There's 60 minutes. So he would have to practice for 33 minutes more before going to bed. Awesome. That was a lot. Let's do number four. Uh, no, was that the last one? Oh, good. That was a hard one. There was a lot to go on there. Turning it into minutes was definitely the hardest part. But you know that there are 60 minutes in an hour. So we can do that pretty easily by multiplying 20 times 3 to get 60 and 11 times 3 to get 33. That's an equivalent fraction. Mm -hmm. You could also figure out how many minutes he did. Okay, so two hours would be 120 minutes, right? Minus 33 would be 11, 7, uh, Oh, I'm having a moment. Oh, eight. 87 minutes is what he's already done. Okay. All right. Sorry for taking you on such a trip there for number three. Uh, but you know, sometimes story problems can go on and on and then we get curious and we want to find more information. I want you to go do your exit ticket. It is not as complicated as the last problem. It says draw an, a model to help solve 5, 6 plus 1 fourth. So there's your 5, 6, and here's your 1 fourth. And when you get an answer, remember to use a mixed number. I'm looking for the mixed number. And two, Paul drank three quarters a liter of water Monday before jogging. He drank four fifths of a liter of water after his jog. How much water did Patrick drink all together? Okay, that is pretty easy. It's just three fourths plus four, oops, plus four. I'll set these up for you, but you have to do the work. Plus four fifths. Okay, and then remember to use your labels and write it as a mixed number. Okay, after you finished your exit ticket, please turn it in and then you can go do your homework, which is one, two, three pages. Looks like there's a pretty killer um, story problem there too, so take your time. If you have questions, we'll go through this tomorrow in class, the homework. Great.